Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy, happy, happy New Year. How are you? I'm well. Thank you for asking. What did you do last night to bring the New Year in? Yeah? Well, hope you enjoyed yourself and that it left you feeling as great as as is possible. Well, as at least as great as I'm feeling this morning. God bless you. My name is Mother Gail Trailer. It is January 1st, and the year is 2020. We're starting a new decade. A new decade. All right. And so far, it's been surprising, especially down here in Chattanooga. And uh, as what I, as far as what I see coming over the, uh, you know, the news flashes, it promises to be a humdinger. Uh huh. Thank God for Jesus. I've been blessed to know that he is with me. He's with you. He said he'd never leave us nor forsake us, and he did not leave us in 2019. This is just in case. And this is uh, just a little blog to let you know that in this world, it is possible to be an overcomer through the word of Jesus Christ, through his word, through living by faith. It is possible to be blessed. It's possible to be delivered. You, we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses through faith in Jesus Christ. Come on, let's pray. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the victory today. Thank you for every blessing. We thank you, Father God, for your promises. We ask you to please forgive us for all unrighteousness. Create in us clean hearts, Lord. Renew a right spirit. Give us the mind of Christ. Open our ears. Prepare our hearts and minds to receive, Lord Jesus, your word so that that word can bring forth fruit. Lord, prepare our hearts. Prepare our minds for this day. Guide us. Lead us. Help us to remember that there is nothing too hard for you. Nothing. Thank you, Lord, because all power in heaven and earth is in your hand. And we are blessed, Father God, with your promises. And blessed, Lord Jesus, with your grace and mercy for this new year, this new decade. Thank you, Father God, for courage. It's not by our might, it's not by our power, but it's by your spirit. So, Lord, greater is he that is within us than he that is in this world. And thank you for that. Thank you for these precious words, Lord. Father God, we just asked you to hear our prayer this morning. Take us through this day. Help us to watch as well as pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Yesterday was a beautiful uh, December 31st. Went to work. Did some, uh, took care of some business. Uh, heard from a baby sister. That was a surprise. I surprised her, and uh, then me and hubby went on down to Tiptonia Baptist, which is right in the area, and we fellowship with them in the evenings on Sunday, and uh, sometimes other times, but uh, it was good to hear and to see 
how the Lord is using God's people, how he's raising them up, how they're victorious. Yesterday you had to tell yourself, look into the eyes of, of your fellow sisters and brothers and know that they have been victorious. We've all come through some uh, interesting times in the last decade. We've had some victories, we've had some losses, we have had some recoveries, and this year promises to bring even more of what we experienced in 2020. Endure. That's the word. Blessed is he that endures unto the end. There's not going to be an easy, uh, carefree, uh, without cross uh, adventure in this next decade. It's not going to be uh, just a piece of cake. I believe you're going to have to really trust in him with all your heart. If you knew him in 2019, you're going to know him, our Savior, our Creator, our Deliverer, our Waymaker, our Mind Regulator, our Heart Fixer. You're going to know him even more in 2020 and the years to come thereafter. This new decade. This new decade. So, let us be up and doing and put on that whole armor because that's important. We have to put on that whole armor. That helmet, that breastplate, those loins gird about, feet shod, a shield of faith, and sword of the spirit. If we've ever done it before, we've got to do it now. Every day, each and every day. Let's open the Bible to Romans, the 12th chapter, and see what we can find in there on this first day of the year. January 1st, 2020. I went for my walk this morning, and it's cool, brisk out there. And I think, every time I think winter has arrived, here comes that spring weather again. But don't you be fooled, okay? You don't be fooled. Don't, don't peel clothing off too quickly, okay? Just don't do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Romans, looking at some paperwork from uh, the church, went uh, to Tiptonia. They had an 8 uh, p.m. service, and we heard uh, young uh, Brandon. And, um, golly, golly, it was good to be there. It was so good to be there. It was so good to be there. It was if he was speaking to me. You know in Revelations where it says to uh, that the, the church of Ephesus was a very gifted church. Um, in the book of Revelations, the, the uh, apostle wrote about as he's uh, uh, being used of God, he's writing about the seven churches. And uh, the letter uh, mentions the book of Ephesus. Okay? Ephesus. He speaks to that church in particular. There are other churches of uh, Smyrna and Laodicea and, uh, you know, Tiatra and so forth. But He's speaking at this time in the first chapter, I think it is, 
to the church of Ephesus. He's commending them, and uh, he talks about uh, how how wonderful they are. They're just good saints, and they 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 they're very faithful to the church. And they they are in that church when it opens, and they're doing work in that church, and they're. Uh, crossing their T's and dotting their I's as they should. But the church has lost the reason for being a church. Church, uh, we were told by young Brandon, is, is community, it's relationship, it's what God cares about. And that's why he spoke about the seven churches. You know, uh, he's very interested in the body of Christ. That's the bride. And he speaks specifically about the bride losing its first love and tells Ephesus to go back and do your first works over again. I tell you, it was as if he was speaking to me. Because I had, had uh, just lately had the same, you know, inclination. And you wonder sometimes about ministers. Who told you what was cooking? You know, sometimes you, you wonder, what, oh, it's embarrassing. It's all up in my business. You know, I felt convicted at, uh, a little while, you know, like after Thanksgiving and so forth, uh, down to Christmas, especially around Christmas. I felt convicted. I said, uh, mm -mm. no, something's wrong. Sometimes you got to check your hem because your hem can be out of your garment. You know, sometimes everybody has hems in their garments. And we put some, uh, you know, we sew up those hems and make sure everybody, everything is straight and we look just, you know, socially acceptable. But to walk around with your hem out of your garment, to walk around and to, to, to think you're in the right place? Are you looking fine? Are you looking great? And to have a flaw in your appearance or a flaw in your character. That's what Christians have to do. We have to watch because sometimes our motives shift from being Christ-like to just religious Z-E-A-L-O-T-S, -Z 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 -E zealots, or just religious people. And you don't want religion. That's man-made. You want Christianity. You want to be Christ-like. Christ-like. You know, there's, there's something about Jesus Christ, which is his motives were pure. And then, uh, I mean, that was an awesome message. Oh, my God. He preached as if he had been fasting all day long. And he felt this thing really, you know, it, he, the way he brought it forth. It had, you had to be convicted. You're convicted. You are convicted in your heart. And we went to, uh, we didn't stay for the uh, evening um you know, the, the watch night uh, bringing in the new year. Uh, many did. Many were out sick. But uh, it was so good just to hug necks and, and to welcome each of them in, as many as I could, to the new year and just hug them. You know, you don't never, you never know where you'll be in the next hour or two. That's the way life is. Nothing is promised that you'll, you know, live to see tomorrow. So you hug as many and hold them dear to you. And, and just feel, you know, just the, the body next to another body. You're alive and you're living. And while you're living and while I'm living, I'm going to hug you and hold you close because I love the feeling. I love the feeling of just touching, touching one another. And, you know, this is a living hand touching another hand. 
I went to uh, with Gary. Me and Gary went on down to, and now we old folks though, and we hanging out with the young. And we went on to all of it, and oh my goodness, we had a good uh, time rejoicing and praising God, and we heard the word of God. I think he brought it forth from the book of Kings, and he spoke about, um, gosh, what was it? It was so interesting. Hezekiah, and it was, which was another, and I had felt this too, 2020, you know, I had a something or me, like, you know, this would have, might have been, might, could have been my last Thanksgiving. You know, when I had my children, I just had to have them. And um, just had that feeling, you know. I had, uh, I had got my plans of what's going to happen after my uh, home going and all of that. And um, I just had this feeling that maybe this was it. But I heard word yesterday. And I also I went to the doctor and, and the doctor mentioned to me about um, something and uh, for a little bit I was a little frightened and the pastor mentioned the same thing. And I ain't tell too many people about my stuff. And I didn't even go to, you know, after that person told me that, oh, we looked at your... Uh, we looked at your report and your kidneys aren't uh, functioning uh, as, as, as fully as they should and blah, 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 blah. So I said, no, in the name of Jesus, I ain't even following that up. I was supposed to go to a, a nephrologist. I am, in the name of Jesus, I thank God for my uh, physician. Okay, she allows me to... to to be my own, you know, there's some things, you know your body, if no, anybody else knows your body, you know the faith you have, and uh, you don't place your health in someone else's hands. Who made you? You're like a washing machine. I got a book that our washing machine was acting kind of stupid, making noises when we put uh, clothing in it. It was bumping and bumping and bumping, and we tried everything we could possibly try. Put foam in the side of it. My uh, handyman, and I love him to death, God bless him, he, he did this, and I was getting ready to put some foam in it. You know, I could hook something up. You know, I could rig it. I could rig a thing or two. And, um... I, got, I come from a long family of riggers. <laughs> we rig something in a minute. Uh, uh, both sides. Gary's side. He, brother, my brother-in-law can rig up something. All my brother-in-laws. Nephew is included. Uh, Billy Jr. Yes, Lord. Daddy rigs something in a heartbeat. But this uh, uh, person that we usually go to. And bless him, Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick. Oh, that's he's a he has a he's a guitar player. That's why I like acoustic music. And um, he he shucks, he did this and did that, and it's still bumped. Still bumped. You can go to the doctor, and he'll give you a pill or two, and it's your body's still out of order. And sometimes you got a new complaint. You know, because they just take a, a bandage and patch something. But if you have faith in God, in the creator of your body, he will heal you. He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly and immeasurably more than what we ask or think. According to the power that dwelleth in you. Hallelujah. And we've got power. Holy Ghost power. If you place your 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 health in, in the doctor's hands entirely, 
He'll give you a pill for your blood pressure, and a pill for your sugar, and your, a pill for your, you know, what ails you, and a band-aid for that, and a patch for that. But baby, there, that uh, uh, system of doing thing, things is growing richer because we're relying on them, and they know we're relying on them, and and. And medicine is not always, uh, you know, it's not always cut like they think. You know, they can stamp a date of your, your demise and tell you when you're going to be born and when you're going to die. That's not in their hands, but they got you believing it because you're trusting in man. Okay? You're trusting in men. But the Lord tells us. Trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding and all our ways acknowledge Him. Yes, I thank God for my doctor because I'll take a, a few flu shots and 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 yes, I'll I'll you know go but so far. But my body and my times are in God's hands. I know what I should be doing right, and I know what I do some of the things I do is wrong. Uh, overeating, no uh, exercise, no uh, sleep, sleep, you know, not sleeping like I should, um, not resting. Um, I know when I feel anxious. You know, I know when I feel uh, 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 weary. I, I, you know what I mean? This temple right here. Okay? And I know who to take this temple to. With everything. You know, they'll slap pills on you. And before you know it, you you done graduated from sugar pills to insulin. That's what my mother did. That's what my mother did. That they would she trusted those doctors. I've worked around them for years. And I know they don't know everything. They may have uh, their parents put them through school and they're still taking off uh, wrong limbs and making mistakes and errors. I've seen it happen. Okay, so anyway, I'll, I'll stop preaching. I'll stop. But I want to tell you this. Uh, he was wounded for my transgressions and yours. He was bruised for my iniquities, our iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him, and by his stripes I'm healed. Healed, healed, healed. And I will not believe otherwise. Aches and pains, they come and they got to go. Mm -hmm. They come and they got to go. Uh, blood pressure. It come, but it got to go. What are you doing for your health? What are you doing for yourself? Are you exercising? Are you eating the right foods? Are you putting yourself in someone else's hands? Hmm? How, how large is, how, how much faith do you have really having God? Or is it just a Sunday go to meeting thing? Child, if you know like I know and you want to live, you better trust in the Lord. Otherwise, hey, get your polo ponies out and get your black dress. And and, and uh, I say polo ponies because the big funerals with the, you know, the horse carriage and all that. I've seen it, you know. Nan had a glorious funeral, you know, but she lived a good, long life. Faith. She deserved every pony that was hooked. <laughs> Uh, attached to that carriage that carried her body to the graveyard. She was a hundred and one years old. But many of us, through um, some of us this year, twenty last year, went home uh, prematurely, and some of us did not. We reached ripe old ages, and I want to live. Don't you want to live? 
Don't you want to live? Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for a rock we can hold on to. Let me get to the word. Anyways, Pastor spoke about that thing that Hezekiah was told to turn his back to the wall. and Oh, man, he spoke. Pastor, my pastor always spoke. My pastor. I don't know. I just don't know. It's just... Lord, have mercy on us. What a blessed, blessed thing to have men of God who speak the word. And, and they're, they're going through times like you are. And, and, and they have their challenges and you have your challenges. And, 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 and this thing is meeting. I mean, the same challenge. I was told to go to a nephrologist. Hallelujah. Our pastor was told to go to a nephrologist and that he was having kidney failure. The blood of Jesus. Satan, you don't scare me. You should have took me out when you, you know, you should have taken us. Okay, through Jesus Christ. Put on that whole armor, child. Come on, let's live. Let's live. Let's do what he wants us to do. Okay, Romans 12. Let's get to Romans 12 and 2. I thank God. I can, you know, you see things. You see a, oh, you don't have time for silliness. But there are people that, um, they're ignorant and they're blinded to the things of Christ. And not only, you know, in, in 2020 will you see, you know, challenges, but people will be used of the enemy to redirect your mind from trusting God, okay, not just your health, but uh, the enemy is, uh, he's, he's a nasty uh, fighter, you know, try to get you one way or, the no or another, to take your mind from believing in God, from trusting in God, to trusting in man. Romans 12, let's see, written by Paul, written to the Roman church, uh, listen, and be blessed. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2020, January 1st. What is God's will for you? Is it for you to sit down and overeat? To eat? You can tell when you're anxious because you start eating everything, you know, trying to look for satisfaction. Satisfied in eating. You can find, you know, you can do that. Our mothers, when we cried and we were anxious because, you know, we were as babies, they duck a bottle in our mouths. And that's what uh, calmed us down. We weren't always hungry. It's just that we were anxious. We were worried. So we ate to satisfy. When you get older, you become worried. Same thing. N different worries. You're not that your, your diaper's wet. You just got bills that are due. Or you got uh, 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 appointments. Who knows? Whatever. What's happening? causes anxiety, causes uh, um, frustration, causes uh, depression, and we eat comfort food to satisfy. Nothing on TV satisfies. You got everything you want and you ain't satisfied. Okay? You got to watch these bodies. They're earthly. They'll have you overeating, over drinking, over even oversleeping. You're gonna sleep long enough when you die. So get up. Okay? That's what I feel. Rise up early in the morning. Get up. I, I don't mind staying in the bed. Sometimes I can't stay in the bed past eight o'clock. Can't do it. But I like to go to bed early too. You know, we need rest. The older you get, I think you need more rest. But thank God for this day. This is Wednesday. 
the first day of January. I'm off. I can rest. Or I can take down some of this Christmas stuff from last year. That's my plan. So, uh, do not be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When you renew your mind through his word, through prayer, through meditation, through, through uh, finding out what he wants, by talking to him, communing, get up early and pray. Then you'll be able to test and prove what's God's will, his good, play, pleasing, and perfect will. We want to do what God wants us to do. So, we confront the author of the book, the creator of life, the savior of our souls. These bodies are earthly. They are, are, are they got a mind of their own. I mean, it just mm, strong. Hey, I want to do what I want to do. You know, and and uh, this this body was we're born in sin and shaped in iniquity, right? Sin. Okay, and the soul that sinned, it shall die. Speaking of a spiritual death, but this body, this 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 little body will put itself in the grave real quick. By grabbing everything, trying to satisfy, you know, everything. Overindulgence in everything. Okay? We're going on a fast. Our pastor's already gone on, uh, started his. Starting on uh, December 6th, our church is going on a fast. We have to fast. you got to put this body under subjection. In the name of Jesus, you will not eat everything you see. You will not speak everything that come to your mind. You will not meditate on silliness uh, and, and not get in the word. You will not. Do what you want to do. Okay? You will not, body. This body, this, this, this soul belongs to God. And it's housed in an earthen vessel. Earthly vessel. Okay, next scripture. We're going to Jeremiah 29 and 11. Let's see what Jeremiah has to say about this new day. We now know that uh, we can't be conformed to this world. we got to be transformed. And, and in order to do that, we got to renew this mind. How do we renew this mind? Get in God's Word. Spend some time on your knees. Pray. Okay? And if you're not praying and you don't believe you need to, keep doing what you're doing. Okay? Keep living like you're living. Keep, how would you say, going to church day after day, not reading that Word, Claiming that you're too busy, okay, but you can look at TV and sit around, blah, blah, blah. Keep doing that, okay. I guarantee you, spiritual death and uh, ASAP, physical death, you're not going to bear fruit, okay. You're not going to bear fruit. And if something in the garden that does not bear fruit, the uh, farmer dungs that tree. I mean, he gets that the, the, the dead leaves and things around it, and he fortifies that tree. And Lord knows, when he starts paying attention to the fruit that you're not bearing, and then he finds that you are not bearing fruit, you're taken out of this garden, okay? Because... The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. All right, Jeremiah 29 and 11. <laughs> Excuse me, please. I have sinuses that uh, sometimes run, but I have a remedy for that. Salt, warm salt water, okay? Don't get me to <laughs> get a remedy. <laughs> warm salt water. Jeremiah says, I'm starting from the seventh verse. It says, but multiply there and do not decrease. No, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will find your welfare. Hmm. It's speaking to something to us about Chattanooga. Pray to the Lord on your city's behalf. 
that's what our pastor was telling us about, praying about Chattanooga. Um, things happen in every city that are detrimental to uh, peace, to uh, those who dwell therein, and we have to pray, okay, about our city. Pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Do not let the prophets and the diviners who are among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams that they dream. For it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, says the Lord. And there are many false prophets today. Many. You hear them on the radio, on the news. Okay? You hear them. But thus says the Lord, only when Babylon's 70 years are completed will I visit you. And I will fulfill to you my promise to bring you back to this place. For surely I know the plans I have for you. Says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for your harm. To give you a future and hope. That is the mo uh, fa focal point of what I just read. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Hallelujah. I, I'm, shoot, I'm putting my hands, my life in God's hands, my children's lives, praying for my city, praying for my children, praying for my church family. I'm praying for my neighbors, okay, every single day. Every day. We are blessed. We are so blessed. And we have been blessed on this street. We have been blessed. We have a family here. And uh, you become a, a community. Okay? And uh, like the community you live in, you, as the years go by, grows. And you learn new people. Um, you just... And you pray for them because God brings them to mind. And, and that's what the Lord wants us to do. But he has a plan for all of us. Okay? I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm us. Plans to give you hope and a future. God's plans, not our plans. He's got plans. For the uh, decade 2020 through 2030. Hallelujah. At the end of 2030, who will you be? Ten years plus. Ho oh, ho. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. And to think how much you would have grown through those ten years. God willing. Because you have trusted in him. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you. God bless you. Don't don't fear. And, and, and ask God for courage. Put away the fear. It doesn't come from God. Okay? Plans to prosper you. 2020 will be a prosperous year. So, and we've got to walk close to him. Uh, Pastor brought a very important point across the pulpit that uh, really made sense. The disciples never asked Jesus to teach them to preach. You know, he didn't teach him. Uh, they, he, they didn't ask him, Lord, teach us how to preach like you. He told. They told him, teach us to pray to pray honest to God I lie not prayer is the key and faith unlocks the door pray children pray my name is Mother Gail Trailer. God bless you throughout this first day of the year and throughout the years to come, throughout the year to come. I love you, and I'm just passing through.